In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install an AEM wideband gauge. Let's go ahead and get started. What's going on everyone? Welcome to Texas HANA channel. If you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. Today I'll be using the GoPro Hero 4 for this video. Figured I'd switch it up a little bit. Um, today we're going to be installing the AEM Series X wideband gauge. Um, it's a very crucial component to having an efficient setup that doesn't blow up. You want to know your air fuel ratios. Uh, before we throw the turbinetics in, we need this step done. Uh, we're basically just going to use three wires out of this uh, wiring mess here, which I have a schematic pulled up right here. From AEM's website, which I will leave a link in the description, it goes over this uh, wideband real well. But basically, we're gonna use pin one, which is red. It's a switch 12 volt power. Pin two, black, a power ground. And then we're going to use pin nine, which is white, zero to five volt analog output. Um, and that white one will go into the computer for data logging. Now I do have that pulled up from their website, as well as I have this um, pin out, the connectors A, B, and D. And D connector, if you're looking at the wires going in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven over from the left is D14. And that is where your primary O2 sensor um, white wire will be at. So we're going to tap into that and uh, I'll go over more of that whenever we do that. So basically where I'm mounting this is pretty cool, so let me go show you. Okay, so it's not so much where I'm mounting it, it's how I'm mounting it. Yoshi is going to be sitting up here. The gauge is in one of these cheap things you can get from O'Reilly's. I'm going to screw it into the dash like that, and then I'm going to actually glue Yoshi's hands onto the gauge, so that way he is holding the gauge. It's going to be pretty cool, and he will hide the wiring, which I will just drill straight down and then feed the wires through. So it's going to be pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the first step. So one of the first steps is to jack the car up and secure a jack stand underneath because we will be crawling under the car to install the wideband O2 sensor. Now this kit does come with a weld in bung. So you could weld, get a exhaust shop to weld this bung in. Um, but I already have a bung welded and on the turbo downpipe I have one as well. So we don't need to do that. But if you don't have one, you can have them weld one in. So we're basically just going to connect that and then feed the cable up through the top and then we'll go from there. But I will be using this spot right here, which is a 19 millimeter wrench to take that off. And if you do not have an O2 sensor tool to use on this, which I do, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the 22 millimeter actually works really well for the O2 sensor tool. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off and put the new O2 sensor in. All right, there it is installed. Now we're just going to feed the connector right here up to the top. We're going to run that connector to this connector here, which will feed that little tiny wire um, and connector through a grommet on the firewall down there. So I'm going to go ahead and run that into the car, and we'll go from there. All right, so we're at the passenger floorboard, and as you can see, they give plenty of wiring with it. Um, we're going to take this part here, and we're going to need to feed it up to the gauge itself. Now, I'm not going to drill a hole yet. What we're going to do is we're going to pull the vent part here out, um, seeing how much room we have to work with. And then we'll probably have to remove or put the glove box down like that, look up in there, and see what we have to work with. So I'm basically just going to get that out, and we'll go from there. All right, the way I'm seeing that I can do this is to drill the holes through the dash. They'll come right out through the dash into here, 
then I can either drill a hole down and run it along that way, which would be super easy, or I can just unscrew this and feed them back through this little gap right here. I'll probably go with this little gap right here, but if that don't work, I'll just drill another hole. That simple. We'll have to get a vacuum and suck all this out. All right, I went ahead and vacuumed all this out and drilled a hole up through here so I can run the wires through. Now that we've got both of the connectors, we can go ahead and connect them to their appropriate spots. Run them down. And then we can screw our screws in. All right, so that's where it'll sit with Yoshi right here. And I'm actually gonna glue Yoshi's hands in once we can verify everything is where it needs to be. And that will hide the wires as well. Looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on. It's looking good. Okay, so for the wiring, the positive I have it ran right here. Um, this port, it says three right above it on the EFs. Um, on other Civics and stuff, it might be the same or it might be different. But this is a positive that comes on when the key is turned forward. So I have that positive ran into the red wire. And then the ground, I have heat shrinked a ground, which I cleaned to bare metal. This is also for my stereo. So these are both really good grounds. And as for the white wire, I have soldered an extra length of wire for the computer uh, data log input. So I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so I have the computer right here. We've got connectors A, B, and D. Um, D14 is the wire we're looking for. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which would be this white wire. So it's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So this white wire right here, what I'm going to do, um, since this is actually an OBD0 to OBD1 conversion harness, this is the best way I think to do it. Um, basically, I'm just going to cut this white wire right here. All right, so I cut it, added some heat shrink right here at the bottom. Now I'm going to connect that other uh, wire up top, solder it in place. I just prefer solder over butt connectors or whatever. And then I'm going to put this up and then add some heat and then electrical tape over that just to ensure it's good. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so I got all that connected. It's all connected to the computer how it should be. All the wires are kind of tucked up. I am going to zip tie all these together um, and shove them up under the dash and then put the computer back up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll see if it works. All right, so it's turned on. We're gonna let it warm up. And then we'll see what it says. So on cold starts, I do run rich. As you can see, that's a 12.3, 12 12.4. 12 um, I do have an exhaust leak before the O2 sensor, which will throw this into a leaner, uh, make it say it's leaner than it is. But if I fix that exhaust leak, this would actually be richer than what it says here. So any air that gets in before the sensor, it's gonna make this read different. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and glue his hands and everything in place and he will be the official AEM wideband gauge holder. Alright, so it's running in the 14s, low 14s. And he's hot glued, I just used hot glue so he could easily be removed without damaging. But even if he was damaged, it's only like 10 bucks, I can get another. Um, but yeah, it looks really good, it's solid, sturdy. And everything seems to be working how it's supposed to now I do still have to get that exhaust leak fixed but that's a simple gasket but I'm not too worried about it since I am turboing but I'm gonna go ahead and shut the car off and we'll go out here real quick all right there it is all done 
Now I did want to show you I still have the factory four wire connected to the harness. Um, that's just to trick the factory computer, the PO6 that I have in here. I'm tricking the computer into thinking the O2 sensor is working properly because I am still getting a signal from the AEM um, and going directly to the computer. But I need all those other, those three wires there to tell it that the O2 sensor is connected. And it's working. No check engine light has come on, so that's good. But before I forget, I wanted to show you I did the Jameson overflow bottle. And I got to use my new tool that Sinformant sent me to make a thread that's on my other channel I'll leave the link in the description for you guys is really cool um, and no the bottle will not have issues to heat expanding and stuff like that and cracking I've never had an issue like that doing this um, and I did it on many many other cars um, the glass bottles can actually withstand a lot of heat and they don't get that hot I even had it on turbo and supercharged setups so just wanted to point that out also got the interior cleaned back up it's looking good Yoshi's just chilling there holding the AEM gauge. Everything's coming together. So it's almost ready for the turbo to go in. Just missing some key components. We'll be on low boost with this engine, but I do plan on putting another engine in. It's a D-series that I built in the past, and it's higher compression, so I'll have to use less boost. And, uh, yeah, we still have a lot of other things to do, so definitely stay tuned. If you're new here, definitely subscribe to Texas Honda Channel, and we'll be throwing this turbonetics turbo and this is just a cheap ebay manifold but it's actually one of my favorite um, the ones that have the wastegate here off to the side are not very good you want a center collector so that it doesn't boost spike but if you have one off to the side it'll work fine for now i would just upgrade and no i don't like the ram manifolds unless they are properly built but i have yet to find one that is good enough for me um, they all crack. Even the cheap and expensive ones, I've tried them all. Well, not all of them, but the ones I could afford to. Up to $500 and it still cracked. So, And yes, it had a turbo support. But either way, I like these for now. I will be getting a PFAB, which is a tubular version of this. And they work pretty good. Turbonetic Super 60 Series. This is actually uh, from my buddy Matt with the blue Civic from the previous video. So huge shout out to him for hooking me up with this. I did work for it, um, but painted his bay and stuff is pretty cool. Um, then we're gonna throw this downpipe, also eBay. The links for these are in the description of the previous video where I got my windows tinted. Um, we'll go out and shoot this thing, have some fun with this soon. So definitely stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's driving good, it's pulling decent. We need it to pull hard, so turbo needs to go in ASAP, but uh, definitely making some progress. Also, people have been asking me where my brother AJ's at. He is still in Kansas. He was supposed to be back Sunday, but he's still there. Um, he actually got rid of Lilith. I know, I am super sad about that, but it's his car in the end. Can't be too mad at him. And uh, yeah, he got something else, which I'll show you guys as soon as he gets here. Um, he loves it, so that's all that matters to me, but I am going to miss having Yosha's twin, Lilith. She's going to be gone. But that's basically it for this video. I hope it helped someone. If it did, definitely hit the like button. If it didn't, definitely hit the like button. Drop a comment below, subscribe to the channel, turn the bell icon on to get notified of every upload, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So as I like to say, God bless, stay safe, stay awesome.